Hi, welcome to Gene Keys with Monifa, your path to vocal superpower. So I'm starting this series for a few reasons. Number one is because I love the Gene Keys and I wanted to share it with my audience. And I wanted a place where I could also do the work that I need to do with the Gene Keys. I, got, I know my own personal profile pretty well. But um, what I know about anything that has to do with energy charting and knowing your purpose is that all of the energies are just part of being human. And what we get to do when we first see our own personal profile is know um, what our own highlighted challenges and superpowers are and our points of genius. But when we get to really delve into the whole of the system, uh, that that sets up all of the archetypes that um, have been known throughout thousands of years uh, for humanity and our lives and how we um, go about being and living together is that you gain such a great understanding for the world and you also gain a huge sense of of compassion and desire to be part of it. Um, that's something that I get from doing so many different kinds of astrology and, uh, why I chose Gene Keys is because it's amazing. Gene Keys is amazing. It gives you this beautiful template of your energy that shows you probably what has historically played out, especially early in your life around the challenges of your energy. And then it shows you the genius behind that and, and what it, what it highlights especially is that there's nothing wrong, right? Your your low vibe or shadow uh, is what the Gene Keys calls it. Way of showing up in your energy is just so that we can hone the skills that allow us to be a genius and a superpower in our, our specific kinds of energy. So never poo-poo your shadow. It's there to show you your path to your genius and your capability of being a superpower or super per per powerful person. <laughs> we are starting with the purpose sphere because it's the purpose. It's why you're here. It's what you're made of. It's like how, it's how I see it. The gene keys are literally um, uh, pointing to the DNA structure, the amino acid that is the energy that makes up your being this energy, right? And so like, there's no better way to start really exploring, but if you want to do the full golden path, it actually starts in a different area and it go takes you through um, an activation sequence, a Venus sequence, which is about relationships and love, and then a prosperity sequence. Um, so I like to get people started just so they can see what it, what it can look like by going to the vocal superpower chart. But there is, um, there's a definitely a full gamut of what you can do. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you, you visit their website with my link. Each key has three levels. Okay. It has the shadow, which has a repressed energy expression side, and it has a, a reaction, a reactive energy side. I call it low vibe. And then the next level is the gift. So that's where your genius lies. When you are able to know your energy clearly and know the highest possibility for your energy, that's what the gift gives you, then you are no longer willing to settle for that shadow, right? And so you're gonna start, your, your, your own cells are gonna start working on changing whatever story you have to change in order to live out that genius and superpower. The third level is the city. S-I-D-D-H-I. -I. So what that represents to me is um, the service to the world. And I see that in two lights. It's going to be a service to the world in the energy, right? Of how um, the energy serves the world with or without you. Like there's energy, we're all human, right? And so somebody else has something like that energy in them. And how that energy is serving the world is what the city is. And, and it's highest expression and it's... Um, fully, uh, fully realized. I don't know another way to say that, but yeah, uh, it's basically the, the best world, the best possible world and expression of the, of the service of that energy. A quick caveat, 
this is how I'm presenting myself to a gene key at any given time. Every time I picked up a gene key, it means something a little different to me. I get a gem every time I do one and each time I see something different, especially if I have somebody different in front of me because that story may play out a little differently and my intuition tends to pick up on that. Um, but also, it's just a deeper exploration of what is, right? And so each time I feel like I get wiser, each time I revisit uh, one of the keys, right? So what I want you to know is that you need to apply your own stories. That's what's going to make this extra special for you. The Gene Keys is not about just knowing your profile and somebody telling you what to do and uh, you, you, know, for you following what they said. The Gene Keys is positioned, Richard Rudd made it so that you will take your own stories and see how it's correlated in your life and be able to see your, your shadow playing out in the stories in your life and see the story of your genius that is becoming in the same stories, right? So you wanna take this information and then think about it to yourself. Have I ever seen myself play this out? So even if you don't know your profile yet, you can already gain like great wisdom just because again, all of this energy is within us. Just some are gonna show up as stronger for you than others, right? They're gonna, you're just gonna be one where you're gonna just be like, oh my gosh, that's my entire life right there, right? And that's probably gonna be one of your, your purpose uh, spheres. You know, you're, you only have one, but your purpose sphere. So, uh, you know, enjoy it, enjoy it. So your signature vibration is something that happens when you are so attuned to your own energy. Uh, for me, it really happens when I'm highlighting one of my really prominent spheres and keys. And, um, and I do my practice. So I do a practice called Get Vocal, which allows you to really um, feel the vibrations of whatever you're concentrating on. So that can be within your body, that can be externally. Um, but when you're concentrating on what makes you, you, there's just kind of this uh, really felt vibe that happens. I can't find another word for it because it's there's it's literal. I'm not making that up. You will feel it. You will feel it in your in your body. You'll feel it in your hands, your feet, your legs, your belly. Your it'll and then when it's really prominent and when you get really resonant in that frequency, I call that your signature vibration. And you know, life is so worth living <laughs> in that space because. It is why you're here, you know, when you're, when you're resonating with the energy that you came to the world with, um, and it's, it just gets brighter and louder in your own sphere. And so you don't have to worry about things like setting boundaries and um, even being so much, you know, intention setting, which I know I, I focus a lot with my clients on because up until now, we haven't had this tool so at hand to really be able to purposefully delve into a specific energy that is set up for you and is you, you know? And, uh, and one of the things Richard likes to say is that um, some people ask, well, what does this key mean, right? This is something that you won't see him do a lot is just talk about the keys plainly. Um, it's because he, he knows that if that's your, your key, if that's your sphere, then you know better than he does because you have the lived experience of being that energy, right? So he's like, well, you tell me, you know, what is that? What does that feel like when da, 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 you know? And so uh, remember that, remember that this is just a starting point and this is just an invitation for you to, to go with me on my journey of knowing the keys better. Um, I often keep these things to myself, but I know that you can get so much value out of this. So I wanna share this with you. This will be Gene Key 54, line five. So um, when, if you wanna look for this information up for yourself, you can always go to the website and get your free profile. Um, a lot of this information is in the Gene Keys book, which I highly recommend, but it is a lot. So um, you don't get the lines in there. And uh, so that's one of the reasons why I decided to do these videos because it condenses it a little bit for you. 
Um, and if you want your own video, you can also click that link in the description box so that you can get your purpose um, key and line done on this channel. So if you have a different um, key number or line number, that's a, all you have to do is just to join the waitlist for the videos that come out each week and so that you can have your own personal one done. So Gene Key 54 is the shadow of greed and the gift is aspiration and the city, S-I-D-D-H-I, of ascension. So um, this is one of those um, keys that are very easy to recognize in our humanity, in our societies. Um, we know that this shadow shows up and have seen even, we're seeing more of it realizing the gift, right? And that you can look at that through any business, essentially, because this this is really one of those driving forces that drive us to succeed um, in life and in business. And the um, it is that drive to want more, to have more, to do more, to be more, to be successful. And that human drive, that success essentially is survival and that you know, if you can get yourself or your group or your tribe to be successful, then that means that they'll have plenty of, like plenty of food, plenty of, and now, nowadays, that looks like plenty of money. And so often you'll see um, businesses that have a lot of this archetype showing up. And um, Greed is one of those things that can transcend, and I feel like we are in a, a time when greed is being asked to transcend into this uh, spirit or, or gift of aspiration, right? And when you're looking for more um, spiritual or more uh, anything that is not material or a hard surface or a physicalized is a spiritual thing so people that are looking for more love in their businesses people are looking for more community in their businesses you, people are looking for more of um an awareness of the of the needs of the earth and our um in communities that need more support uh any businesses that is looking at these things is seeking to move out of this energy or of humanity of just need to get in order to survive and 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 expanding to something uh, more spiritual and in that expansion helping others so uh, in the shadow it looks a lot like um just never learning from life's lessons so the programming partner of 53 is immaturity and the shadow and that that's essentially what immaturity is is that you're not learning from past mistakes or life's lessons from even other people's lives and so it looks like just um never maturing into a, a better understanding right and the drive the shadow a lot of times you'll see people just needing to look successful not even always um being successful as much as looking successful because the essence of this is this energy is really just about connecting and building relationships that allow us to increase our resources so this is where we kind of get that idea of like the joneses and that kind of thing keeping up right um keeping up with the joneses is the the phrase but it comes from this knowledge that if i look successful other successful people will want to know me right and people that aren't successful want to be like me right so it kind of perpetuates this idea that success is um external material right um and so it it's uh, catching you know anybody who's primarily working from this shadow it affects a lot of other people and it a lot of other people become like drawn in by that shadow of wanting to look successful wanting to have more right 
um, but it's also something that can direct us into the, the higher aspiration once we recognize that. And the hard part about this shadow is that it attracts other people who can be greedy. And the problem with that is that um, the essence comes from a, a fear um, and lack of trust, as, as all shadows are usually come from some kind of fear or and or anger. And um, when you have that lack of trust, then you are actually attracting other people who have that lack of trust. And it and the outcome looks like not having integrity, essentially being willing to do anything in order to succeed, to get more, to have more. Right. And so if you are operating in that energy, then you'll attract other people that attract are in that energy. And then that leads to you not being able to trust the people that you're partnered with, allied with, work with. Right. Um, and so it kind of creates that perpetual cycle of, you know, not trusting anybody and then like somebody proving that people aren't trustworthy. Right. That's in your circle or cycle. So. Um, so yeah, so it gets back to that root and the need to feel secure and never really feeling secure because the circle's never trustworthy, right? And that this idea that you can't you can't trust anybody who hasn't proven themselves, who is not in that inner circle, right? And then you know, often eventually that inner circle itself being somehow somehow betraying you, right? So um, it can create a pretty, like all shadows, it can create a pretty um, dastardly cycle of, of repeating these, these energies. On the repressive side of this energy, it is, the word for it is um, unambitious, okay? So unambitious is basically the repression of ambition, which is a factor of greed. It was, you know, it's actually a little bit higher in energy because at least am, ambition is saying that, um, is that you want to accrue more for a purpose, right? Like that you're looking to, to get somewhere to, for a reason. And it could be a spiritual reason. It could be a community reason. It could be, um, it could even be a spiritual reason. And, um, and we'll talk a little bit about that, how spirituality can masquerade in the shadow here. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so like the oppression is just like not feeling like you can succeed. It comes back in this kind of fear cycle that you may start ambitious, but you know, eventually you get disillusioned, maybe by a betrayal, maybe by just um, life circumstances, things not moving fast enough, which is a possibility, especially for this key. Um, it might take some time and dedication before you see results in this key and energy. Um, so it can bring up the fear that you'll never get there, you'll never achieve the thing that you are aspiring to or. or uh, and you have the ambition for right and so um, and so like it leads to this kind of depressive state of not just giving up and like uh, not even trying anymore right. Um, and so the other side of this is is the spiritual side where you actually have a very am spiritually ambitious nature, but it is um, so focused and. Um, it takes over essentially this idea of aspirations for spirituality and so that you are not even recognizing the physical needs and um, paying attention to what you actually need, you know, in your human physical world, right? So that includes money and stuff like that. So spirituality as a distraction from greed. Then we have the reactive side. So the reactive side is being greedy, is in the active state of being greedy. And so it's just this obsession of accumulating more and more and more for success, whatever success looks like for you. And um, it can come from rage or disappointment, is how I kind of see rage, where you just are so disappointed by people that should have supported you or, um, or society in a way that the society should just support you. And it builds this kind of anger and resentment and anger and resentment leads to rage, you know? Um, um, never being able to know that whatever you're doing is going to benefit somebody. Um, so this is creates that lack of not feeling connected to the rest of the world. There's a fine line um, 
between greed and aspiration is they're very similar qualities. And even the city has a very similar quality. So again, like none of these shadows, there's nothing wrong with these shadows. It's an energy that drives our um, purpose, our purpose for being here, our evolution uh, in our spirituality and uh, it drives our evolution as people, right? And so um, energy itself knew that we had to have an impetus to build, to grow, to create. And that's all this is, that's all this essence is. So that difference between greed and aspiration is minute, right? And as soon as you're pointed in the proper perspective, it becomes a very beautiful uh, gift, which is that the aspiration is looking to trust the higher spiritual sources. So however that looks like for you, but being able to trust and continuing to aspire or to um, cultivate, right? Uh, spirituality, because it's the true source of, of what we are seeking in that material accumulation, right? And so when you get to um, really understand that the, the the bounty is in that space of spirituality, then you naturally start to work to benefit others. It's no longer just you, you working to accumulate for yourself, but in order to benefit somebody else, you do do work. And in order to um, create a, a community where people can be benefit from it, you uh, do things, right? So this key is very much somebody who is creating models of being able to work together in cooperation so that the community that they create can thrive. And it's a very natural key and in, in, in the sense of knowing and understanding your energy, right? So a lot of us um, that are empathic kind of have a sense of energy, but there's this energy, there's like feeling energy and there's like understanding the flow of energy. Where is energy coming from? Where is it going to? What is, how does it function? in and through us as beings. And uh, Key 54 has a very innate understanding of this, and they understand a lot of systems of energy naturally. They don't need to um, study so much, although they might find a lot of um, affirmation there by studying some of the systems of energy flow. Um, and they naturally understand that cutting off any part of that energy flow will deplete their own resources, right? So if you recognize that happening um, when you're living in that in the shadow energy, um, it's a very good cue to say, oh, there's a potential for a gift here that is not quite happening yet, right? So it kind of inspires us to live into our higher vibration and frequency of our of our gift, right? And um, you recognize it also in your communities. So the, one of the driving forces for your community can be so that you can help them realize that they don't have to continue in self-destructive patterns and that you can um, bring them away from that. So learning from past mistakes, right? So like you start to give that as a gift to the communities that you are in and create, right? There's another um, aspect of this key, and, and a lot of the keys do have these kind of um, physical um, manifestations of the energy, and uh, this one is smell. So it, it actually deals with our, our five senses of smell. Um, the, there's other ones that deal with other senses, but this one is smell. So you can actually have, maybe, maybe you can even think of some phrases where you talk about you know, the smell of greed or the smell of success, smell of failure, like how often that actually will come into the conversation so that people can smell something's off with a deal. Have you, if you, maybe you've heard of that people speaking to it that way. And it's because it's a natural thing that the actual scent of the body changes when you're operating from fear, which is the greed or the lower vibration, or if you're operating from support, there's a different scent to you. And so you'll also find that the, the 50, key 54 people um, might do a little bit better if they're in person with somebody because they can actually smell you, right? <laughs> 
and 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 uh, get to know your energy that way. And so it's um, it's actually can be a high benefit for you. And the other one, um, the, so what I I want to point out also before we wrap up in the gift area is that those any system so including like the energy flow systems for feng shui for there's so many energy systems and it's something i'm enraptured with so <laughs> you know so i follow them all even though i don't i can't possibly do them all but i have learned about as many as possible but the essence of that study and and systemization of energy flow is essentially alchemy and again you'll ha- you'll have noticed how businesses are talking about alchemy nowadays because they are recognizing it as the transmission the transformation of energy and that when you are in um a high vibrational flow of energy it looks a lot more like alchemy of you know taking something and turning it into the higher vibration of it than um replacing or getting more right which is kind of the, again the historical system of greed of just get more and then you don't have to worry about the stuff that's no good anymore or is no longer viable right so that is something to look into is just knowing that you you already have an innate nature for this you might already even have a system that you haven't um, written down yet or maybe you did write it down and (laughs) now you know that it's actually a form of energy flow um as as much as a system like feng shui right so that's fun to me now the city is ascension and the city is it's really inspiring to me because it is the point, like the point in my world, the point of, of aspiring to spirituality in the first place. And it's the spirituality and the highest service of being a seeker, you know, seeker for the sake of being a seeker, just spirituality being the goal. Um, and so this key is in a, is in a prime place for a lot of people who have um, become sages or have met their uh, sense, uh, you know, have stories of enlightenment, right? So um, it's actually, you know, that energy of that, you know, the spirit seeks and see, you know, and it's in that state of that energy that allows the ascension, right? Um, and so one of the beautiful lessons from this key whether you have it as a prime key or not is that you have to have your own path to become becoming enlightened or ascended as a as a human being right um you can't follow somebody else's path right so um you can be inspired by a path similar to yours so let's say you have a mentor or teacher that is also a 54 and you are you have 54 in your primary gifts right so you might um be inspired in the right direction right through working with that person but uh if you're with somebody who does not have a a similar energy or or path realization then it can be confusing and um and it can disrupt you know your your path and your walk as you might get confused and get off path and uh and you know everything's for a purpose and a reason but you know us we're, we're trying to get there we're not trying to be you know off in the the brambles forever so <laughs> um so yeah so if you are are seeking remember you don't want to pick something that feels foreign trust your own energy trust your own frequency and uh, find something that that feels resonant with the path that you have been given just by being born. Yeah. Line five is voice and frequency. And it looks like the voice and frequency coming from the activation sequence. And it looks like being a leader or a victim coming into the Venus sequence. Right. And so voice frequency, that that element of your line 
is about your nervous system. That's how we connect into being here and on the planet. It's a nervous system and the voice being the realization of breath. And I always talk about voice like this, that, you know, breath is unsensed. It's part of the air and then you breathe it in and then the air is part of you, right? But then the voice is the realization of breath, right? You take the breath and then you speak a tone and then a vibration happens, right? And so I call it um, the fastest way to practice manifestation is to work with your voice because of this reason. Because every time you speak, every time you sing, you're practicing what you thought should come out to what actually comes out, right? And so being clear and intentional and present and in flow and connected to your energy and the world and your intentions and the outcome while being present to love and life and happiness is a constant practice for me and something I think is what has made my life um, infinitely better over these last few years. And so, uh, so yes, so in the voice archetype, it really helps us to um, do some kind of voice practice, whether that's using um, tone, like chanting or singing, you can hum even, uh, but you, you want to have some kind of voice practice that is something that you do regularly to bring you back to this just sense of beingness, of purposefulness, of, of uh, liveliness, right? Uh, and so that's something that I recommend for anybody with a line five in their purpose sphere, okay? It also, in your path and your relationship with others of the Venus sequence, it's it's the, got the shadow side of being a victim and then a, the gift side or the, the higher vibration side of being a leader, right? So when we're in the shadow, we tend to be lost in self-pity and we tend to um, feel so bad and so disconnected that we can even decide to make somebody else feel the same and make another person feel like a victim with our words and our voice, right? Um, and we're, we're very clear on how to do that. If you're anything like me, like you can, you can see the whole scenario playing out in your head and, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully you had, you know, some amazing parents that made you choose something else, or maybe, maybe not. Maybe you had a, a better path than me and you learned how to voice and you decided earlier that you didn't want to be that person <laughs> instead of holding on to it so much and then kind of self um, recriminating and making myself smaller in order to not be that person, right? Or that of, of attacking people and making them feel like a victim. Um, either way, the energy is trying to play out so that you can see your possibility of leadership. Because when you're in the the victim uh, energy in that shadow, then all you're doing is living in this illusion, right? Because <laughs> you, ha you have this genius and you have this superpower on the, right on the other side. And it's just the lack of knowledge maybe or the forgetting of that truth that allows you to feel in any way that you are a victim or that we are victims because I often feel the same way. If you're living in the strength of being a leader, then you can see clearly. You get to see just as clearly as you saw, like the way to to say something that would make somebody else feel like a victim. You can see clearly how to help somebody, right? And the and the high vibration um, and the strength of this line. And so, and just as clearly, you can you set out to create clarity instead of confusion and letting other people fall into the illusion of victimhood. You're creating clarity and helping people understand and empower themselves, right? And so, just the practicalness of your mind helps you see how we let codependence turn us into victims, and then how to lead people into an authentic presenting to our truth of being empowered and in some version of leadership for everybody, but especially us. Uh, those who are in the fifth, um, who have a line five, you are, you are a born leader, right? Especially in this purpose sphere. And so if you're in the victim, you know, if you're in low vibration, you can recognize if you're like complaining a lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I don't know about anybody else, but that that's definitely me. I can complain, maybe not out, out loud. I don't like to bother people <laughs> a lot of times, but in my head, I'm like, blah, 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 you know? Um, and so it doesn't matter if it's internal or external, either way, if you're complaining, then feeling sorry for yourself, then you're in that victim sphere, right? If you're in, uh, in self-awareness and you're able to see yourself clearly and you can see how people blame each other for their emotions, then you are on your way to being a leader. And one of the beautiful things about the, the strength of this line is that your voice, when you're in your gift, is magnetic. People will stop and they will listen to you if you are in the vibration, your signature vibration of your gift. So yes, yeah, so with these keys and lines together, we get to travel that serpent's path. Uh, the One of the titles for the Gene Key 54 is the serpent's path. And it is that path, that Kundalini path of realization of at ascension, right? So when we invite with our voices, into our communities and magnetize by this understanding and, and um, energy and vibratic, vibrational energy of um, possibility of, and again, like when that expansive energy is there of support, then we all get to realize the possibility within our own makeup and resources, right? And so that beautiful, beautiful, work of following that path and not following anybody else's but your own that comes up own ascension from root to crown right so if you would like your gene key read don't forget to go ahead and click below so that i can get your key your purpose key in line uh, so that you can be next on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. All right, and now I'll do a vocal contemplation on key 5495. Mm -hmm.